two years on from his notorious behaviour on TV in Boiling Point, Gordon Ramsay has it all. He's one of London's best chefs. He's got money, power, machismo, love, A-list celebrity friends. The food's been absolutely pucker. And fame. He's even become a sex symbol. He's got a good-looking um, body. He's very fit. But can he control his infamous temper? Honestly, Friday, you know what you can do? Yes, sir. Give you notice. He says he's changed. I think my man management skills have improved. Hello. This is a fucking embarrassment. But what happens behind the scenes when Gordon Ramsay goes beyond boiling point? The 25th of January is an obscure date for most of us, but for the world's top chefs, it's more important than Christmas. It's the day Michelin annually awards its coveted stars to a tiny number of Europe's greatest restaurants. For Gordon Ramsay, who's been stuck on two stars for three years, getting his third ultimate star has become a total obsession. Winning three Michelin stars, it is my goal. He's obsessed with it, he never stops thinking about it. It's his excuse for his behaviour in the kitchen. Get off the section. Get back on the section, yes, yeah? Please. And there, there you go. Hello. I just want it dealt with. I want John claude dealing with it. I want you dealing with it. That's all. That's Dominic, yeah. how can I call away and serve at the same fucking time? If you give me, if you tell me, tell me. Okay. Christ almighty. But will the new millennium finally bring the three stars that Ramsay craves? Our story starts with 25 days to go. It's New Year's Eve, 1999. Gordon's in the kitchen cooking whilst his wife Tana is in hospital, about to give birth. She phoned him at midday, but Gordon's in no hurry to get to the hospital. She's having a caesarean, I think, so um, I don't really want to be there. It's 6.30. Tana's just had twins, but still no sign of Gordon. I'd be a bit more nervous having him there. So to us, it just works well that he's there immediately after the birth and, uh, and the actual sort of bloody bit is left to the girls. Finally, at 7.30, Gordon makes it to the hospital. How are you? Um, uh, Kate Anna, Ramsey. He finds Holly and Jack in the special care unit. Six weeks premature, they both have problems breathing. <laughs> Fantastic. He's a dude, isn't he? The size of his feet. So small. The problems aren't unusual, but they worry Gordon. Babies being born at a little under 34 weeks have problems both with breathing feeding and temperature control. Uh, I was very scared and uh, I couldn't believe the amount of alarms that were going off and they just looked so ill. And I, I just, you know, was um, praying that, you know, they'd come through. It's quite upsetting for him to see them having to have tubes and, and on a ventilator. And Gordon can only cope with a brief glimpse at Holly before having to leave the room. Right. I was petrified inside that um, intensive care unit, yeah. I mean, uh, there's very few times in my life that I'm out of control. And uh, very few times that I'm not um, in control. Oh, mm, God. He's very excited. Although he did say to me this afternoon, can't you hold on till just after midnight? I don't think he's experienced contractions. <laughs> But even at times of crisis, Ramsey's still got one thing on his mind, that third Michelin star. 33, a month ago, three children. There's only one more three I'm waiting for. <laughs> God almighty. I tell you, I can't get any closer now. Yes, with only a week to go, Michelin star fever has once again hit London's restaurateurs. It's all about building consistency. 
and increasing your standards year in, year out to meet the demands which are expected. But the result is a closely guarded secret. The main reason why chefs at my level respect Michelin is because no one gets close to them. Except that this year, three-star chefs Marco Pierre-White and Nico Dennis have caused controversy. Marco has already announced that he wants to give back his three stars, whether Michelin want them back or not. Um, and the other rumour doing the rounds is that Nico has also given back his three stars. I gave my three stars back for the simple reason is that, you know, 20 years I've been in the kitchen, and winning three stars was very exciting. It was a major part of my life. Retaining them, I found rather boring. But Ramsey's making his attitude towards his former employer quite clear, so as to improve his own chances. Like they rightly said to Marco, three months ago when he announced his retirement, it's not Marco White's decision to give the three stars back. They made that quite clear. I respect Michelin and I admire what they've done for gastronomy in Britain. Um, I, think, I think people's demands have changed. So Ramsey's the contender, and all he's waiting for is an official visit from Michelin to confirm his new kingly status. Michelin traditionally send over one of their top honchos from France uh, to have a look before they award three stars to anybody. Uh, so if he hasn't had that visit from uh, um, Monsieur Michelin de Paris, uh, then he ain't going to get it. It's the 20th of January. The pressure's on. There's still been no visit from Michelin. Even worse, Gordon's got a call from an insider who's heard a hot rumour that Ramsey's not going to get that third star. Is someone pulling my cock? Uh, is this the fucking... Is this, is it, is this a wind-up? What do you mean, think of this, and no one can lose my second star? Fuck yeah, well, that's some consolidation. I mean, how, how friendly were you? How friendly are you with him? At times like these, Ramsey's notorious temper can get the upper hand. Come on, Sarge. Come on, push it out. Mark. As his staff know yeah, only second. too well. It seems kind of, uh, you know, sometimes standing here, it just seems so kind of lethargic. I, don't, I honestly don't know what's going on, but, and, and you've got to, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I said, hey, I said to you last night about working blind. We work on the pass. Oui. We're sending four main courses and you're sending starters or the cappuccino. You've got to, you've got to, sometimes it's so lethargic, it's, yes. it's shocking, you know that. Wait. But cooks are your standard and you, you, your age. Yes, sir. The news begins to sink in. I was doing my fucking head in, you know that. I can't even go for... That's probably... Um, I think in my heart of my heart, if they're not here tomorrow, then quite frankly, we haven't got it. OK. OK, take care, bye-bye. Finally convinced, Ramsey's off to his hideout in the basement to get his head together. This prick on the telephone um, says to me, well, look, you haven't lost a star. You're not going to go down to what? I mean, is he fucking real? I can wait as long as it's necessary, but it's just doing my head in. This is the worst time. and The only way to deal with this is to take a fucking holiday. See, look, here we go again. Yeah, I'm here, this is my hideout, and the phone still goes down here. No one's supposed to know I'm here. Hello. Meanwhile, at Mayfair restaurant Petrus, Gordon's best friend, Liverpudlian ex-boxer Marcus Waring, is also awaiting the Michelin results, hoping for his first star. Two stars is sort of the, cr the cream, the icing on the cake for us all, really. It's not just about one man here. It's, a, it's about a team of people and a loyalty to that man. As one of Ramsey's most dedicated ex-employees, Marcus Waring is keen to live up to his former teacher's expectations. My uh, way of saying to anyone, what's the reward for sticking with someone like Gordon Ramsay? Well, then I'm sitting in it. It's there. This is what it... This is it. I haven't put one penny into this business. Not one single penny. He hasn't asked me for a penny, but yet he's made me a partner, and he's spent and put 1.2 million pounds on my head and I'm very grateful for that. He has no doubts that his friend and mentor will get his third star. We're all excited for him and we're all waiting with anticipation as much as he is and there's no one will be more happy than myself. But not everyone is so sure. In the city of chefs, rumours abound that Ramsay's notoriety has landed him in trouble with Michelin and they've even reached the godfather of them all. Marco Pierre White. I hear rumours that they didn't like what he did in his last programme. You know, that shouldn't enter the equation. What should enter the equation is what he puts on his plate and the service you're given. And if Michelin want to be childish about it, then fine.
that's their, that's their prerogative. You're always going to revert back to say, well, Ducasse was 33 and um, Marco was 33 and the Porcel twins um, in France were 33, um, so why can't I get it at 33? Um, it's a bugger. I think Gordon deserves his three stars. And I think if Gordon doesn't get his three stars, then it's an injustice. Meanwhile, Ramsey's nerves are on razor edge. He's discovered some white beans that aren't quite up to scratch. The beans are undercooked, and to add insult to injury, they're five days old. Sarge, fresh garnish, yeah? They're fucking useless, you know that. You know that. Ramsey's determined to identify the culprit. Sarge, are you tasting anything, or are you just here for the money? You're here for the money, aren't you? There were some white beans. They weren't as fresh as they should have been. And Gordon spotted it, luckily. I should have spotted it, but I didn't. And um, I got told off for it, which was entirely correct. He cooked them Friday morning for Friday service? Yes, sir. So Thursday evening. Friday That's morning. ridiculous. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't give a fuck if we cook a spoonful. I'm not bothered about how much we cook. We don't, don't. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Kitchen service continues as usual while Ramsey's attention switches to a second victim. Do you not realise those beans are hard on your palate? Can you not identify that? Yes, sir. It's a blanquette de legume. You're more interested about your cars and all no, that bits of bullshit, aren't you? No, no, Why are they so undercooked? I'm not sure, Sorry? I'm not sure, The other day things happen, I mean, it's like, you know, even the best, stupid example, even the best Formula One team made a mistake. You know, I saw Nick Hacking and losing the wheel a couple of times in the Grand Prix. Shouldn't happen, this thing. You guys are paid a lot of money, they should do the best they can. But, you know, you always made a mistake, and, you know, I made mine, the Sarge made his mistake, and we get for that, like, obviously. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, in front of the camera, that, but at the end of the day, you know, it happened. Ramsey launches a full scale investigation. He's convinced the staff have tried to cover up. Why are you sticking your fingers in? Why are you sticking them in? What about this with a spoon in your hands, you fucking idiot? And Ramsey's temper shifts up a few gears. Why is the fresh chicken stock on there tonight? I want to know who done that. Uh, because there was a lot of, uh, was a lot of stock in there when I opened the bed, so I let it down with some there. No, there's, no, there's, no, there's no, nothing old in there. That's all fresh chicken stock in there. I want to know why. Sarge. So, I mean, I'm going to get to the bottom of it, I'm going to find out the truth, and then that individual can go and fucking look for a new job, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, sir. Why, is this, why have they been washed out? They're undercooked. Yes, yeah? sir. And they're, they're, they're undercooked, they're too firm, and all the stock that they've been cooked in has been washed off. Why? When they're CV, you And I want to find out what the truth is, because I want to find out who the donkey is here. Beans. Cooked on a Friday and used on Wednesday. I knew when I tasted the jus that someone's trying to cover up. Excuse me, can you get them in the bin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is it. A hardcore way of jumping into you what's right and wrong. Some people can take it, some people can't. And if someone's ever going to try and dictate to me that we cook fucking beans on a Friday for Wednesday, a hey, young man, set for Russian, hey, yes, I suggest they cook Pacific Rim at 300 covers, yeah? Yes, you know that? Because that's quite fucking breathtaking, you know that? Yes, and because we're not selling any, does that give us any right to cook it less or longer? No. We're undercooked and then five days fucking old. Yes, yes, Every other day. There's no excuse. Yes, With or without an Italian on the fucking section. Who will be the new fall guy for the beans fiasco? Does that mean Sarge is off the hook? And will Jamie Oliver come into the firing line? Plus, is this really the end of Ramsey's dream for his third Michelin star? Gordon Ramsey's on the rampage. He's launched an investigation into these beans. They're undercooked and they're five days old. He wants to know why and who's to blame. Hey, young man, young man. If you think you're in Paris now and you're cooking for Andrew Cass, is that what you think? You're not a hot chef, are you? You're not, you're not hot. You're, it's not for you, is it? No, I'm yeah, Sorry? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I don't think you'll ever cook again. I'm honestly serious. I'd actually like, I'd, I'd prefer to give you notice. I didn't come back home and start crying about it. I'll say, oh, yeah, I don't want to go work anymore or I'll give my notice. I just, you know, I made that I was wrong. And uh, I realised then, you know, 
obviously you try to do it, not do it again. But Gordon hasn't finished with hapless Simone yet. Thank you, young man. Yes, Gordon. Fuck off downstairs and clean the fridge. Because I think you're good at cleaning fridges. You came from a pizzeria, didn't you? No. You didn't come from, I thought yes, you came no. from a pizzeria. Yes. You got no idea. I'd really start rethinking whether you should be in this trade. You don't give a toss, do you? You don't give a damn, do you? So why is it stone cold? Simone must bear the brunt of Gordon's pre michelin intention. He's sent downstairs to be Ramsayed. That's pathetic. Why are you acting like this? I'm not, I'm, I'm not. Now the beans are sour. Why are we cooking them once a week and not twice every other day? Why is that? I don't think you should cook, you know, because that, you're, 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 you've got no respect for what you do. You've got no feel. Maybe write your notice. Maybe go and get your own job and do whatever you want to do, but don't fucking stand in my kitchen. What the fuck are you doing? It's not a game, Gordon. So what is it then? You're not saying it's cooking, are you? No, it's gone. Sorry? No, Gordon. I think you better just give me your notice. Don't worry about your job in Paris. No, you know that. No, I think it's easy for you to fuck off back to Italy. It's early on Michelin Monday. The guide is going to be in the shops in 20 minutes. But Ramsey's thought of a faster route. Gordon's gone over to Petrus to meet Marcus. Brace <laughs> for the result. There's your fucking head in, doesn't it? Huh? There's your fucking head in. Hey. Hey. They go to Marcus's local cafe to await the decisive phone call. Is it outrageous, isn't it? By now, Ramsey's about to flip, and the morning doesn't start well. Excuse me. Don't bother you, please. So, are you a waitress or are you? No, I'm not a waitress. You're not. What are you then? No. Anyway, what do you want? I, I would like. Not what do you want. What, do you want? what would you like? <laughs> I would like a nice cold glass of milk, please. Can I have a tea, Thank you. Thank you. Please, thank you. I just said thank you. As the Michelin guides are being delivered around town, Gordon's already on the phone. Have you got? A, have you got a press release there? Serious. For Ramsey, the news isn't good. Ready? Petrus, fantastic news. Mirabelle as well. Ready. Jeez, no new three stars. Fuck you now. Fuck you now. Fuck you now. Definitely no new three stars. Now the books are hitting the stores, but Ramsey's clinging on to every hope. Unbelievable. I mean, do you think the facts of the press release out in two different lots? If they do the one stars, the two stars... Huh? Huh? But Gordon refuses to accept the verdict until he sees it in black and white. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see an official press release, no? Yeah. OK. OK, no, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you a call later. OK. Thanks, Anthony. Bye-bye. Fuck it, no. All Ramsey wants to know is why. I mean, you can't just sit down and ask for a meeting. Fuck you now, shit. I can't believe it. In a desperate last attempt, Ramsey calls Michelin HQ incognito. Hello, good morning. Uh, the uh, press release is available today. Excellent. And um, can I... Uh, are there any, um, are there any new three stars? There's not, no. And are there any new two stars? Excellent. OK, and, um... That's it. Thank you, Richard D. Bye-bye. Oh, you got your star, Congratulations. For Gordon, it's the bitter end of a long wait. It'll be another year before the next Michelin Guide. But over at Petrus, the staff await Marcus's return. I just found a very happy chef. Congratulations. Yeah, well done. You do well done, you. Yeah. I didn't tell anyone because I thought you should tell anyone. Congratulations, big man. You got the start. Yeah. Well done. Well done, guys. Yeah. We want a star. Thank you, Ray. Buoyed by his success, Marcus now wants two stars, just like Gordon, and he's got a plan. And now I just concentrate on my second. My ambition is to hopefully try and achieve it uh, in the January 2001. It's a very high ambition, a very, very uh, 
ambitious to actually say that, but at the same time, if you don't set your sights to that level, you'll never achieve any goal. Uh, so that's what I'm going to achieve. It starts today, uh, and it's a new race. Things aren't quite as jovial at Ramsey's. Alan, we haven't lost the start, guys. Yeah? OK, David. Uh, we just haven't won one. The staff have taken it very badly. We're 99% sure. Still haven't seen it in writing, but um, I think Gordon's rung them up. And we've now got a confirmation we haven't got it, which was uh, this year a bit more of a surprise than last year. We have to work hard, and uh, I am always hoping one day yeah, for, for him and for us, yeah, we will get uh, the supremacy, so the first star. But uh, we, still, we still work, and uh, it will not stop me for anything. There's an atmosphere of mourning in the kitchen. After Gordon's major disappointment comes more pressure to keep the cool. Um, no, Celebrity the chef Jamie Oliver has come to spend a few days in Ramsay's kitchen to pick up some tips and commiserate. I just can't believe that he didn't get his three mission, the third mission in style this year. It'll, it'll come next year, but, you know, and it's not all about badges anyway, but I just think it's thoroughly insulting when you've got, you know, some stale old man doing the same old thing. And, and it's someone that's kind of fresh and got loads of ideas and is trying to extend what's going on in England food-wise. And, uh, and they're not getting the credit that's due, really. I've been pretty blown away. The food's been absolutely pucker. You know, there's, a, there's a fair bit of bollockings, as we all know, you know, telling off going on. But um, not without reason, you know, it's because it's the geezer cares. Ramsey's been so preoccupied with work that he's not spent much time at home leaving long-suffering wife Tana in charge. I'm a mum, aren't I, Jack? A mum and Gordon's wife. A newspaper photo shoot provides an occasion to get acquainted with twins Holly and Jack and play with daughter Megan. Oh, my God, that's holding me. I'm dreaming. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weekend. Tanner's a slight bogey in Holly's nose. It's actually the first time I actually held them both together, you know that? Tanner. I know. It'd be nice to get to sort of wake up and smile a bit. Wonder if they can't smile yet. You got it, man, yeah? You got her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Thank God for pink and blue. Has Holly got red hair? No. Ginger. <laughs> God, does that look ginger to you? Grumpy Jack. Just oh. like your daddy, aren't you, Jack? Just like your daddy. Grumpy. Next week on Beyond Boiling Point, Ramsey holds Marco Pierre White's hand in court. He takes on the establishment, and is he the steamy chef in this racy novel? Oh, his taut muscles straining underneath his shirt. The bull's horrendous. But is descent brewing in Ramsay's kitchen ranks? What questions that we we'll ask Gordon? Gordon's got a thing on he doesn't want you to be a pussy, man. doesn't want anybody to be a pussy. Gordon was twat. You got no respect for what you do. You got no feel. Maybe write your notice. Maybe go and get your own job and do whatever you want to do, but don't fucking stand in my kitchen. What the fuck are you doing? It's not a game, Gordon. So what is it then? You're not saying it's cooking, are you? No, it's gone. Sorry? No, Gordon. I think you better just give me your notice. Don't worry about your job in Paris. No, you know that. No, I think it's easy for doing fuck off back to Italy. It's early on Michelin Monday. The guide is going to be in the shops in 20 minutes, but Ramsay's thought of a faster route. Gordon's gone over to Petrus to meet Marcus, braced for the result. There's your fucking ending, isn't it? Huh? There's your fucking ending. Hey. Hey. They go to Marcus's local cafe to await the decisive phone call. Outrageous, isn't it? By now, 
Ramsey's about to flip, and the morning doesn't start well. Excuse me. Don't bother you, please. So, are you a waitress or are you? No, I'm not a waitress. You're not. What are you then? No. Anyway, what do you want? Anyway. I, I would like. Not what do you want. What, do you want? what would you like? <laughs> I would like a nice cold glass of milk, please. Can I have a tea box? Thank you. Thank you. I just said thank you. Truth. And then that individual can go and fucking look for a new job as far as I'm concerned. Yes, sir. Why is this? Why are they being washed out? They're undercooked. Yes, sir. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're undercooked. They're too firm. And all the stock that they've been cooked in has been washed off. Why? When they're CV, you go and I want to find out what the truth is because I want to find out who the donkey is here. Beans. Cooked on a Friday and used on Wednesday. I knew when I tasted the jus that someone's trying to cover up. Excuse me, can you get them in the bin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is it. A hardcore way of jumping into you what's right and wrong. Some people can take it, some people can't. And if someone's ever going to try and dictate to me that we cook fucking beans on a Friday for Wednesday, hey, young man, separation. Hey, yes, I suggest they cook Pacific Rim at 300 covers, yeah? Yes, you know that? Because that's quite fucking breathtaking, you know that? And because we're not selling any, does that give us any right to cook it less or longer? We're undercooked and then five days fucking old. Every other day. There's no excuse. With or without an Italian on the fucking section. Who will be the new fall guy for the beans fiasco? Does that mean Sarge is off the hook? And will Jamie Oliver come into the firing line? Plus, is this really the end of Ramsey's dream for his third Michelin star? Gordon Ramsay's on the rampage. He's launched an investigation into these beans. They're undercooked and they're five days old. He wants to know why and who's to blame. I want John Claude dealing with it and I want you dealing with it. That's all. Dominic, how can I call away and serve at the same fucking time? If you give me, if you tell me, tell me. Okay. Christ almighty. But will the new millennium finally bring the three stars that Ramsey craves? Our story starts with 25 days to go. It's New Year's Eve, 1999. Gordon's in the kitchen cooking whilst his wife Tana is in hospital, about to give birth. She phoned him at midday, but Gordon's in no hurry to get to the hospital. She's having a caesarean, I think, so um, I don't really want to be there. It's 6.30. Tana's just had twins, but still no sign of Gordon. I'd be a bit more nervous having him there, so to us it just works well that he's there immediately after the birth and, uh, and the actual sort of bloody bit is left to the girls. Finally, at 7.30, Gordon makes it to the hospital. How are you? Um, uh, Kate Anna, Ramsey. He finds Holly and Jack in the special care unit. Six weeks premature, they both have problems breathing. <laughs> Fantastic. He's a dude, isn't he? In my heart, in my heart. If they're not here tomorrow, then quite frankly, we haven't got him. OK. OK, take care. Bye-bye. Finally convinced, Ramsey's off to his hideout in the basement to get his head together. This prick on the telephone um, says to me, well, look, you haven't lost a star. You're not going to go down to what? I mean, is he fucking real? I can wait as long as it's necessary, but it's just doing my head in. This is the worst time. and The only way to deal with this is to take a fucking holiday. See, look, here we go again. Yeah, I'm here, this is my hideout, and the phone still goes down here. No one's supposed to know I'm here. Hello. Meanwhile, at Mayfair restaurant Petruce, Gordon's best friend, Liverpudlian ex-boxer Marcus Waring, is also awaiting the Michelin results, hoping for his first star. Two stars is sort of the, cr the cream, the icing on the cake for us all, really. It's not just about one man here. It's, a, it's about a team of people and a loyalty to that man. As one of Ramsey's most dedicated ex-employees, Marcus Waring is keen to live up to his former teacher's expectations. My uh, way of saying to anyone, what's the reward for sticking with someone like Gordon Ramsay? Well, then I'm sitting in it. It's there. This is what it... This is it. I haven't put one penny into this business.
not one single penny. Three stars was very exciting. It was a major part of my life. Retaining them, I found rather boring. But Ramsey's making his attitude towards his former employer quite clear so as to improve his own chances. Like they rightly said to Marco three months ago when he announced his retirement, it's not Marco White's decision to give the three stars back. They made that quite clear. I respect Mission and I admire what they've done for gastronomy in Britain. Um, I, think, I think people's demands have changed. So Ramsey's the contender, and all he's waiting for is an official visit from Michelin to confirm his new kingly status. Michelin traditionally send over one of their top honchos from France uh, to have a look before they award three stars to anybody. Uh, so if he hasn't had that visit from uh, um, Monsieur Michelin de Paris, uh, then he ain't going to get it. It's the 20th of January. The pressure's on. There's still been no visit from Michelin. Even worse, Gordon's got a call from an insider who's heard a hot rumour that Ramsey's not going to get that third star. Is someone pulling my cock? Uh, is this the fucking... Is this, is it, is this a wind-up? What do you mean, think of this, and now I'm going to lose my second star? Fuck yeah, well, that's some consolidation. I mean, how, how funny were you? How funny are you with him? At times like these, Ramsey's notorious temper can get the upper hand. Come on, Sarge. Come on, push it out. Mark. As his staff. Thank you. Congratulations. For Gordon, it's the bitter end of a long wait. It'll be another year before the next Michelin guide. But over at Petrus, the staff await Marcus's return. I just found a very happy chef. Congratulations. Oh, well done. You do well done, you. Yeah. I didn't tell anyone because I thought you should tell anyone. Congratulations, big man. You've got the start. Yeah. Well done. Well done, guys. Yeah. We want a star. Thank you, Ray. Buoyed by his success, Marcus now wants two stars, just like Gordon, and he's got a plan. And now I just concentrate on my second. My ambition is to hopefully try and achieve it uh, in the January 2001. It's a very high ambition and very, very uh, ambitious to actually say that, but at the same time, if you don't set your sights to that level, you'll never achieve any goal. Uh, so that's what I'm going to achieve. It starts today, uh, and it's a new race. Things aren't quite as jovial at Ramsey's. Alan, we haven't lost the star, guys. Yeah? OK, David? Uh, we just haven't won one. The staff have taken it very badly. We're 99% sure. Still haven't seen it in writing, but um, I think Gordon's rung them up. And we've now got a confirmation we haven't got it, which was uh, this year a bit more of a surprise than last year. We have to work hard, and uh, I am always hoping one day uh, for... Fuck you now. Fuck you now. Fucking hell. Definitely no new three stars. Now the books are hitting the stores, but Ramsey's clinging on to every hope. Unbelievable. I mean, do you think, in fact, the press release out in two different lots? If they do the one stars, the two stars... Huh? Huh? But Gordon refuses to accept the verdict until he sees it in black and white. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd like to see an official press release, no? Yeah. OK. OK, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you a call later. OK. Thanks, Anthony. Bye-bye. Fuck it, now. All Ramsey wants to know is why. I mean, you can't just sit down and ask for a meeting. Fuck it, now. Shit. I can't believe it. In a desperate last attempt, Ramsey calls Michelin HQ incognito. Hello, good morning. Uh, the uh, press release available today. Excellent. And um, can I... Uh, are there any um, are there any new three stars? There's not, no. And are there any new two stars? Excellent. OK. And... Um, that's it. Thank you, Richard Dean. Bye-bye. Oh, you got your star, Congratulations. For Gordon, 